rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All of our commissioners here this evening. We're uh, missing Mr. Henry, uh, but let's uh, work through the agenda, and I'm sure when he arrives, he'll catch up in no time. That takes us to uh, item B, the adoption of the agenda. I move that we adopt the agenda. I second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That takes us to the adoption of the minutes. Is there yep. changes or everything? I'm sorry, please. go ahead. Yep. No, go ahead. Uh, there's a Mr. instead of a Ms. for my name. It's not a big deal. But. <laughs> I'm, I'm competing with that one with, I believe it's Tori Von Acker, not Tony Von Acker. Tori. 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 T O R N E Y. So we can make that change <laughs> and make sure we. Get the other straight for Miss River. Thank you. And you're just going to repeat what that was. Could you repeat your change step, please? Yeah, my it's just it has Mister instead of Ms. Ritter. Okay. <clears throat> and do I have a motion to adopt with those changes? So moved. Thank you, Gary, and a second. I'll second. Thank you, Tommy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to the first of our three public hearings we have scheduled for this evening. Um, zoning ZA240503, Matthew Citizen Requested Text Amendment uh, to RCC 170-66.5. Ms. Summers, would you mind to cue that up for us, please? Sure. The Rappahannock County Code and the State Code provide citizens with the opportunity to, to petition or apply for a zoning text amendment. In this case, the applicant, Mr. Matthews, has applied for a text amendment to the Rappahannock County Code, Section 170-66-K6-4, for the deletion of the word paid. Uh, this portion of the code currently deals with additional standards for tourist home and bed and breakfast. The uh, code currently reads in Ag and Conservation Zones, the minimum acreage required requirement for tourist homes and bed and breakfast shall be 10 and 20 acres provided, however, that the board can waive the minimum acreage requirement only if the property has frontage on a public road, paved public road, that is part of the state primary or secondary system. Again, the proposed is to take out the word paved, so it would just be frontage on a public road. The current code was adopted by the board on February 1st of 21, with another minor change in 23, as part of the package of the May amendments that had been contemplated for years by that time. The amendment to that code section in question made on that date caused the section to be more permissive with respect to the ability to keep to get a waiver for the minimum acres requirement. Prior to this amendment, the code did not contemplate for any ability to get a waiver at all. As it read prior to the amendment, in A and C zones, the minimum acres requirement for four homes and bed and breakfast shall be 10 acres. Thank you, Ms. Summers. Uh, are the petitioners present? Uh, do you have anything to add? Sure. Um, Yes, uh, so we moved in a couple of years ago and we um, were simply looking to be able to petition for the community to weigh on whether or not we could um, occasionally rent our home out on a temporary basis. Um, so the request for the deletion of the word paved was really just to give us the similar rights to most other citizens in the county to be able to petition for the community to consider whether or not they would be comfortable with us having a temporary usage of our house. So that is basically the petition. All right. Very good. We'll uh, have the public hearing, and then there may be other question or, 
questions from the commissioners for you. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing on uh, ZA 2405 Matthews for the citizen requested tax amendment to RCC 170-66.5. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please uh, raise your hand and uh, come to the podium. Make your comments. Please be sure to include your name and the district that you're from. And I ask, uh, we have quite a few things on the agenda tonight, so three to five minutes would be great. Thank you. Don't fight over who's going to go first. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathleen Griffin. Uh, my husband and I own the property, two properties, uh, 324 Riley Hollow Road and 346 Riley Hollow Road. And Jim Northup is here. He owns the third piece of property at the end of the road. So it's the end of state maintenance and these three properties exist. The reason I've come here today is because um, I want to oppose changing the le playing field that we've been dealing with all along with um, these Airbnbs coming and going. If you strike the word paved, what you end up with is any walking path would be adequate. He's not asking it to change to unpaved. He just wants paved out. If you look at what's required for a paved road, it's different from what's required to, for the road to be unpaved. We've had a gravel road since I've been there. We bought the first property in 2015, I think, and then the second one a few years thereafter. Um, and basically, it's the Riley uh, fine farm, the old Riley homestead. Um, and basically, what we're saying is, if you decide to change the rules at this point, what you're essentially doing is doing a de facto spot zoning. In other words, changing the rules so that his property will fit into the rules to allow him to ask for a bed and breakfast. I have problems with the whole idea of his particular property having a bed and breakfast, but I'm not opposed to bed and breakfast in general. I think that if they're well maintained, it's, it can be a bonus to the community. I mean, we have no hotels really to speak of. We don't have places for people to stay. But do you really want to have the smaller pieces of acreage, which historically have been conservation, to suddenly become economically developed places? Um, the problem, again, I have with Scott and, and his property is they came here and immediately started doing a bed and breakfast didn't ask for anybody's permission. Maybe he didn't know the rules, I don't know. But um, when he was confronted by that, I think the zoning administrator confronted him with that, um, they changed it and now they're um, doing a, a monthly, which is outside of the restrictions of the Airbnbs that we have, which is fine and that's within the rules. The rules exist so that people will have predictability and that the people will be able to anticipate what is happening to their property. When I bought the property, I expected a non-paved road. The issue of the plan for paving roads in the area came up, and we were assured that Riley Hall was taken off that list. And my husband said, we, so you've promised me that you're not going to pave paradise. And they agreed that it's <clears> off the list. Um, but the problem is, when you ha have people who are not from this area coming into a bed and breakfast, in a small road with no real knowledge of the area, and particularly um, our area is very curvy. Again, I'm not upset about bed and breakfasts as general practice, but you have to follow the rules as they're laid down. You can't simply change the rules as you go along. Okay, now we're gonna take out the word paved, so now I can use my footpath to go to my Airbnb if I have 10 acres, 20 acres. You have to avoid the spot zoning and you have to avoid creating an unlevel playing field for the other people who might move here and who might want to do the same thing. Thank you. My husband has submitted a letter, I believe. I also uh, saw the zoning administrator's staff report. I think it's well written and would suggest that um, they adopt her findings. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Members of the Planning Commission, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment on this proposal. Uh, my name is Jim Northup, and I live at 321 Riley Hollow Road uh, in Huntley on property that has been owned by my family for 60 years, 
and I care deeply about trying to maintain the peace and solitude we have in our little part of the county. I oppose dropping the word paved from this zoning ordinance. As I mentioned in my written correspondence to you last week, as I travel around Rappahannock County, I feel what I think is an important distinction between those parts of the county that are served by paved roads and those that are served by gravel roads. And for lack of a better term, I refer to those areas as the front country versus the back country areas of Rappahannock County. The current zoning ordinance appears to recognize that important distinction. While not prohibiting overnight rentals within the agricultural and conservation districts, it does restrict this activity to tracks of a certain size and prohibits waivers for tracks that fail to meet that standard, as we heard earlier, unless they are on a paved road in the front country areas of the county. This strikes me as wise and thoughtful, uh, and I assume that word was not in there inadvertently, it's in there on purpose, and it helps to preserve the special character of these remote, these more remote areas of the county. Consequently, I urge the Planning Commission to deny this request. Thank you for listening to my opinion. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I just want to give you guys the opportunity. Uh, thank, thank you guys for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Herb Hickson. I'm on Old Brown Town Lane, directly adjacent to the Airbnb. Well, not directly, but just down the road from the Airbnb property on Riley Hollow. Um, so I, I take Riley Hollow home every day, um, full time out here. Um, I'm just here to speak um, against taking the word paved out as well. Um, I guess to, to, I guess more so um, the condition of the road itself and the amount of um, volume on the road. Um, last year, uh, people drive pretty fast on the road and we, we, when we know people, neighbors, we can tell them to slow down. When we don't know people, we don't know how to tell them to slow down. But I was almost struck on the road before um, and I, I didn't know what was going on because I saw a higher volume of cars um we had a lot more people well weekenders walk old brown town sometime and sometimes it's the same people but we had people walking on old brown town we didn't couldn't place their faces sometimes i don't think people sometimes know what's private property and what's not um so that was a concern as well and then the additional traffic on the road from out of state tags we didn't really know what was going on so looking into a little deeper we found out there was an airbnb on riley hollow to which i think i reached out to michelle summers um, that property was taken down, but relisted. Um, so reported it again, that property was taken down, relisted, reported it again. So the requesters know that the law in the county is what it is, but was, but it was, um, brought back up several times. Um, but, but which was a little bit of, um, a little bit of, a uh, annoyance when you're trying to jog and hike on the road. People, people enjoy walking on the country roads and that's what gives them exercise. Um, but more so speaking of the conditions of the road and trying to be rather quickly about this, um, we have, we already have a high number a volume of people driving on the road and they drive relatively quickly on the road. Um, we try to get people to slow down. The conditions of the road being gravel um, don't really lend themselves to additional uh, folks traveling up and down those roads. Additionally, I, 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 I'm a driver for the ambulance of Flint Hill Volunteer Fire um, and Rescue, and uh, it's difficult enough to drive on some of these roads that aren't two lanes. And I think it's not conducive to people's, um, you know, uh, tr not conducive to trying to get up into an area and, uh, you know, help somebody out whenever, you know, there's additional traffic on these roads and uh, you're, 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 fighting for a single lane gravel road, you know? So I just wanted to speak on, on that front. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Bills. I'm from the Wakefield District. Um, that was my husband. Uh, 
We do live on uh, Old Brown Town Lane, which is, um, as you know, off of Riley Hollow Road. Um, our dirt roads are part of the fabric of this, uh, this county. Um, and I just uh, am concerned with the increased traffic um, that this might bring. Um, you know, not only to Riley Hollow Road, but they're asking to change the county ordinance countywide. And I think this is gonna affect, um, you know, not only our neighborhood, but um, uh, future, you know, Airbnbs down, down the lane. Um, I think we should be protecting these roads. Um, if, if we're going to allow this type of thing to happen, um, it's gonna require more maintenance on the roads. It's gonna require um, more tax money to do that. And, you know, I'm not interested in going down that path for, for one or two people that want to, you know, take advantage of, of the, the system and try to change the, um, the, the ordinance. Um, I think um, um, we do have to be concerned about the emergency services. Um, as many of you know, uh, I'm a part of that here as well. Um, I'm very concerned about the traffic, uh, the, the speed at which um, our cars go down this road. I was almost hit this morning. There's a, a, a curve that's nearly a blind curve, and there was a, a um, contractor flying down the road. I found out what it was like to put his brakes on on a gravel road and nearly sideswiped me. So I am concerned about um, our, our emergency services. It's not easy driving those trucks down the road, but we know how to do it. Um, and I don't think that renters know how to operate on our roads safely. Uh, I know of one other incident that someone was almost hit on the road um, because of a car going too fast. And I just think the increased traffic is, is not conducive and, and, and in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I would urge, urge you to, uh, um, you know, reject the change and I appreciate uh, you allowing me to speak. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? Can I ask a quick uh, process question? I'm his husband. Do I need to speak now? Are you part of the application? No. You are welcome to speak now. First of all, uh, thank you, and Jim, it's good to see you, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Ms. Griffin, in person uh, Please for the first time. Please address your comments to the commission. Oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to clarify a few things because we are aware of the concerns of our neighbors, and we have tried to think through what is the specific request we could make to limit the impact our request has on the overall county and cognizant of the concerns our neighbors have had. So we did not want to explore whether we should try to get Riley Hollow Road paved because we know that our neighbors would not like the road to be paved and we appreciate the fact that it is currently gravel. We also know that the word public roads would remain in the regulation. So it does not apply to any gravel road within the county. It would still be limited to any public road, whether it is paved or not. And I think for the purpose of this application, it's important to bear in mind the specifics of our property, which is we are on Riley Hollow Road, which up to about half a mile prior to our property is paved and then it turns into a gravel and there are only uh, three additional houses or two properties beyond our property and then it's a dead end. Old Brown Town Lane separates off before you get left to our property. So Old Brown Town Lane and the traffic is not going to be impacted by the specific property that we are in because it already cords off before. So while I hear the concerns about the public safety and the, the traffic, which uh, you know, is, I think, a legitimate concern. Uh, my experience has been when friends have come to see us out here, they tend to drive more slowly because they are scared of the gravel, but that's a different story. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that the reason we are making this petition is it would provide the opportunity for us to file an application, not to run in bed at breakfast, but to occasionally Airbnb it out when we are not out here or have friends here and to make that request to the community and the county, which we are currently not able to do because of the highly targeted nature of this specific provision, which based on our understanding was to target one specific property owner who ran a B&B in the past, and the provision was written to specifically target that one property. So 
we hear the concerns of the community and we also want to protect the rural nature of the property, which is why we made this hard, highly targeted request because we don't think it's going to significantly impact the county writ large and would then allow us to make an application for an Airbnb with clear self restrictions where we would say that we wouldn't rent it out to more than four to six people any given time. We would limit the number of times a year because it is not a commercial uh, bed and breakfast that we want to run. It's ideally a place where a few times a year when we are not there and we want to make some additional money to upgrade the property, we could make that happen. And currently because of the specifics of the provisions which we weren't aware of when we bought the property of the, it has to be a specific uh, conservation zone, acreage, public road, and not only on a public road, but the public road needs to, to be paved. Uh, that is why we make this highly targeted request. And we look forward to engaging with anybody else in the community on this. They're welcome to approach us and, and have a conversation with us as well. But I just wanted to clarify a few things and provide some more um, reasons for why we made this request. Thank you. My name is Karen Hunt, Jackson District. As a county, we should be mindful of and sensitive to policies and decisions that permit or otherwise encourage commercial, retail, and business uses in our ag and conservation districts and the impacts those uses have. As the Planning Commission is well aware, gravel roads necessitate additional considerations above and beyond those of paved roads, including safety, maintenance, traffic volume, and appropriate driving behavior. Those of us who call Rappahannock home understand our smaller private and secondary gravel roads merit special consideration due to unique features such as topography, lines of sight, et cetera. The particular section of our zoning ordinance referenced in the proposed text amendment application protects the rural nature of this county as well as property owners in ag and conservation districts from adverse impacts created by conflicting uses. I researched the history of the ordinance language in question here. It is unclear to me why the applicant contends that the ordinance language was created explicitly for one property in the county, and I would suggest that he is postulating without basis in fact. As the Planning Commission is also well aware, we as a county have not only a right, but a duty as part of good governance to regulate what uses are appropriate in what zoning districts and under what conditions. Rappahannock has, for many decades now, clearly defined ag and conservation districts as inappropriate for most non-agricultural uses. In limited and specific situations, we tightly define and regulate what might be allowed by exception. Zoning ordinance text amendments are not something to be taken lightly, and certainly not simply because an individual believes they should be entitled to apply for a special exception they are not eligible for. The applicant's property is in a conservation district and is 11.33 acres. Our zoning ordinance requires a minimum of 20 acres in a conservation district to even be eligible for consideration of a tourist home. It should be noted that this applicant has a history of violating our zoning ordinance by illegally operating a tourist home not once, but twice. Consider these facts. They purchased the property on June 30th, 2022. There are documented Airbnb reviews as early as August of 2022 from people who rented their property. The first notice of violation for operating a tourist home without a permit was issued by the county on December 22nd of 2022. The second notice of violation for doing the same, again, was issued August 3rd of 2023. Asking residents of this county to support amending our current ordinance which protects the rural nature of our county, specifically sensitive ag and conservation districts and all property owners in them, asking citizens simply because one owner purchased a property not eligible for the commercial use they want to conduct is just not a valid justification in my opinion. I respectfully ask the Planning Commission to deny this application. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? If there's uh, no one else wishing to speak on the citizen requested text amendment, I'm going to go ahead and declare the public hearing closed. 
And at this time, I'll turn to my fellow commissioners for comments. Would you care to go first, Steph? I think. Sure. I, I mean, I, no. I don't you really know, know the uh, benefit of making this about <laughs> a specific property. I think this maybe should be a more general conversation yeah, than that. No, I was but, gonna, I, yeah. but I do know that. I <laughs> think. Um, I, I'm extremely concerned about our conservation zones in particular, and I think adding traffic of any kind in those zones is a bad idea. I also think that um, the Board of Supervisors has given the, this particular provision a lot of thought and gone over it several times, and I, I just can't see any reason at all to change the wording. Thanks, Steph. Ms. Summers, um, do you know since you've been here how many other requests that you've had for a like request, I mean, to have a road switch from uh, gravel to paved? Just off the top of your head, I won't hold you to it. Not other that I can remember. The, um, I think there's there's two kind of issues that I hear. I mean, one, uh, people talk about the paved road, and again, I think that's more of a, a VDOT determination. I, I mean, I know we run into a lot of issues with type one, type two road. That being said, I understand you're wanting to change this provision um, for, for your, your, your needs or whatever. Um, but given the fact that um, that it's not really a prevalent issue, I I would be inclined to say no as well. But I'll defer to the others. Anyone else? I think to make a claim that it would not affect the county at large simply kind of shows us that you weren't at the meeting last week or last month yeah. where we tried to do something even bigger on a probably even a more dangerous gravel road. Um, I think we were very careful in leaving paved road in there for specific reasons. Um, it'd be nice to go to GIS and start clicking on lots <coughs> smaller than 10 and 20 acres to see how many parcels this would affect. but. I think it goes far beyond just right at Hollow Road. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> I, I see no reason to, I've heard nothing that would change my mind about taking out the word paved. That paved does not mean that it has to be black asphalt. Paved is also a surface tree, and that does not will it take up weight a lot from the rural part of the county. So I would definitely, I, I see no need to take the paved out. And, and, and it will increase traffic on the road. And when you increase traffic on the surface, I mean a gravel road, that increases maintenance. And that causes us to beat our tax dollars, our tax dollars coming out. So I say no, the word paved was in there, for a specific reason, and it needs to stay there. Um, I agree. This was not that long ago a very, very thoroughly uh, vetted policy issue. I didn't necessarily support it in the beginning, but it was vigorously discussed and debated. To me, this is maybe an example of why the recent expansion of the right to propose a text edit. I mean, I mean, I'm all about giving people rights, but if these uh, folks had probably spoken to any one of the commissioners, uh, we could have saved everybody probably a fair amount of, of uh, time and heart, heartache tonight. But I, this is a non-starter as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I do think it is important to recognize that petitioners have the right to bring a request for a text amendment at any time to the Planning Commission. Um, you pay your money and you take your chances, as the old saying goes. And um, we had a discussion at the board level whether it was appropriate to continue allow, to allow that on an ongoing basis. And uh, I believe the Planning Commission was part of that discussion. And um, the board and the Planning Commission, the, the majority 
uh, belief was that it is appropriate to allow anyone to bring a text amendment at any time uh, for a request in front of the Planning Commission and Board. Um, I was thinking of the meeting, uh, I guess it was in December of 2018, when, uh, no, it would have been December 2019, I think it was John Lasinski's last meeting on the board, and we had it at the high school. I think you were there. Were you there, Gary? I know, I know Al Henry was here, Depends was there, and he's not here tonight, he can't help me out. But I remember it because it was a very large meeting, and uh, 2A was on the agenda, and it filled the auditorium at the high school, but a lot of people also came out to speak on this matter, uh, whether it was appropriate the way it's phrased currently in the ordinance. And my recollection is that overwhelmingly people supported this language in the ordinance and found it to be appropriate. Um, I certainly uh, am all about property rights, but things are written out with the way they are to protect people's property rights and peace and quiet in their own home. Um, and when you move on to an unpaved road, I think you do expect some end of the road privacy. And it is easy for people that aren't familiar with that road to drive uh, unsafe for conditions on a gravel road. Um, if they're not familiar with how to drive on that road or gravel roads in general. Um, I understand folks' concerns about volume increasing and that it, the road deteriorates faster. And also, uh, one thing nobody mentioned, but I hear about a lot as a supervisor, is that if we have a dry spell and you have a lot of traffic, your dirt road will be very dusty. And um, so anything to keep the traffic counts down, um, I think is, is beneficial. Um, so I, I don't find it to be arbitrary and capricious at all. I find it to be very well thought out and uh, in addition to that, uh, vastly supported by the community over my years on the Board of Supervisors. Um, but I do thank you for bringing this matter forward as is your right. Uh, do we have a motion to? Uh, I move that we recommend denial of the text, the proposed text amendment. Thank you, Mr. Light. I'll and second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. We'll see you at the uh, Board of Supervisors meeting in August. Correct, Ms. Summers? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome to stay or go, whichever you prefer. Um, the next matter on the meeting agenda this evening is Special Exception 24-03-05, Harmony Manor Bed and Breakfast, LLC. 28-52F, bed and breakfast. Um, Ms. Summers, would you be able to introduce that for us, please? Yes, Ms. Shelley. Harmony Manor B&B LLC has applied for a special exception to operate a five-bedroom B&B at their property identified by tax map number 28-52F, 65 Park Lane, zone agricultural, which is approximately 29 acres in size. This structure currently serves as a primary residence for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Henderson and also serves as a tasting room for the Little Washington Winery, which is located on an adjacent parcel access from Christmas Street Lane. The health department commented that according to the record, the subject is permitted for a six bedroom. They performed a visual inspection and the septic system seems to be in good condition and as it was last pumped out about four years ago. The applicants did a water sample through the health department, the applicants received an inspection and a permit to operate as a B&B with one meal a day for on-site food for guests. VDOT commented that Clark Lane is a private driveway off of Route 211. No new entrances are being proposed. Their comments from 2022 are still valid, which were and are. One, clarify whether the useful function is a private five-bedroom home or will there be other activities uses, including any available to patrons other than the tenants. Will the rooms be rented to individuals as individual lodging units? Two, based on previous discussions, there are multiple land uses that share Clark Lane access to Route 211. Parties with a vested interest in Clark Lane should consider improving the existing entrance on Route 211 
based on total, total traffic, volume, and types of vehicles using the entrance. Three, consider working with a co-op next door to improve the existing shared entrance condition or eliminating it. Four, consider special exception conditions that would help ensure that there are no substantial impacts at the entrance, possibly by placing a time limit on the permit so that any issues or complaints can be addressed and any needed improvements implemented. They also recommended as a fifth and final, any large event should obtain a VDOT land use permit for special events to ensure added, adequate traffic control is provided. Clark Lane has a private 30 foot private right away. The Hendersons currently have an open permit for lane disturbance to improve a portion of Clark Lane by repairing the roadway within the existing right away by removing the existing hard pavement millings and replacing the surface with a wide travel way using millings. The first approximately 295 feet of Clark Lane has not been improved and remains approximately 12 feet in the width. The approved plans are on file for this project call for roadside ditches, which do not exist in the field as they are shown on the submitted plan in the Type 2 road standards. Staff has evaluated Clark Lane and found that it neither matches the design included on the erosion and sediment control plans nor Type 2 road standards, which is mandatory special standard included in 17066K6 for BMB establishment. Beyond the mandatory Type 2 standard, the RCC includes regulations related to vehicular access to uses in the county. The listed pertinent regulations identify that Clark Lane, along which the applied for use is located, is currently existing in a condition that is not conforming with the zoning ordinance because it currently serves more than five lots and does not meet a Type 1 road standard. Staff does not recommend allowing additional uses that are not permitted by right unless access issues are brought into conformity with the county code. Clark Lane currently serves more than five lots to include seven existing homes with the applicant address already having a co-located agritourism. Further, the interest of Clark, the interest of private Clark Lane to the public road system is located within the commercial general zoning district and specifically within the General Commercial Overlay District, as referenced by VDOT, access management concerns are present with the location of Clark Lane relative to the adjacent commercial exit from the co-op store. The two entrances on the Route 211 are essentially, essentially immediately adjacent. The zoning ordinance states, in no instance shall the distance between entrances serving adjacent land used to be less than 40 feet. The zoning ordinance may not be able to force the reconfiguration of the current separation between Clark Lane and the exit to the co-op for current vested uses, but it does provide support for the county to not exacerbate the conflict by allowing additional traffic, reg regulating for new uses that are not permitted by right. The commission, if the commission is inclined to recommend approval of this application to the board, there are a list of conditions within the staff report um, that can be read later tonight uh, if requested. Again, this is not a use permitted by right and requires a special exception so that it can be compatible and it is the burden of the applicant to satisfy such requirement found in the general standards. Thank you, Ms. Summers. Uh, would you all like to address the commission at this time? Thank you. My name is Carl Henriksen. Um, let me address this. This, I, this is the first time I've heard about these, uh, the staff report, so it would be helpful to have that in advance next time. But nevertheless, the Type 2 road is a big issue, um, and the biggest issue that we see in it is, um, in terms of failure, if that's the right word, is the crown. And the crown is, is, is got some elevation to it, but in terms of maintaining that, uh, and running the runoff, controlling the runoff, um, we've set it so that it'll slide to the side, and I can use the equipment that I have to maintain that equipment. It has ditches on either side for drainage, and the drainage works quite well, and is quite effective. Um, but I'll have more comment on that once I have a chance to see the staff report. This is a property tax abatement farm stay operation, is what this application is all about. Um, 
This is an application before the county for the agritourism property tax abatement machine, which is what I call it, um, or a farm state facility. One that can reduce the countywide property tax burden by anywhere from 20,000 to $50,000 a year. Approximately 15,000 of that is direct lodging taxes and then five times multiplier of that for the tourists that spend in the county. When I was on the board in Loudoun County, our economic development guys said that that dollar that is spent in the county bounces 11 times before it leaves the county. That's a huge economic impact. I think in Rappahannock County, it's a little less than that because I have three full-time employees and they all live outside the county. So they take their paycheck off someplace else and spend it in Page County, Fauquier County, and Culpeper County. Currently, the county derives one to 5%, uh, one, 1 of the 5% that we send off to the state as a sales tax. To me, the choice is very clear. In addition to the sales tax, we generate the county taxpayers, these guys back here, should enjoy the 5% lodging tax and the sales tax when you grant the application. In addition to the economic benefit here, we'll hire several additional people, which I think is an important element in, in Rappahannock County. From an agritourism perspective, this uh, Shenandoah National Park did a study in 2019 where they calculated that the counties and their businesses enjoy a 1.2 billion direct cash benefit if they're within 60 miles of the perimeter of the park. That would mean if you take four entrances and do some quick arithmetic, $350 million in tourist dollars drive by that driveway every year. We hope to capture some of that money on behalf of our taxpayers. Everything Donna and I do is first class. Our first class products have been recognized by a number of organizations. In 2019, the Washington Awards program recognized Skyline Vineyard Inn as the best boutique hotel in the Washington area. That's not little Washington. That's big Washington. A readership survey by Saber Magazine awarded us five awards. The most notable of those was the best overall winery experience in Virginia. Virginia Living Magazine TV acknowledged our Dirt Road Wine Club as the best in Virginia. UDISC, a software application for the disc golf community, recognizes Jen recognized Jenkins Mountain Disc Golf as the number two best course in the world. That's a good one. Uh, UDISC also recognized Jenkins Mountain Disc Golf as the third best disc golf in the world, one serving beer, one serving wine. And Donna, being quick on her feet, called him up and said, does anybody else have a beer and wine license at the same time? And they said, no, I guess you're number one. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, we are an award-winning first-class farm. We should be able to offer stays that can reduce the property tax burden in the county by twenty dollars to $50,000. How does this fit within the comprehensive plan? The county's guiding the document for land use, specifically as stated in the Virginia Code, the comp comprehensive plan shall be made with the purpose of guiding and accomplishing a coordinated, adjusted, and harmonious development of the territory, which will, in accordance with present and pro probable future needs and resources, best promote the health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, and general welfare of the inhabitants, including the elderly persons and, and disabled. The county's 2020 adopted comprehensive plan encourages agritourism. Par Principle one, paragraph two states, encourage renewal and diversification of horticultural, viticultural, agricultural, and forestal uses, including agritourism efforts, such as wineries while mitigating negative noise, visual traffic, and other effects on adjacent agricultural and residential ag activities. That describes Skyline Vineyard Inn. I would encourage you to recommend this application. A farm stay facility contributes to the county's economic development base. Specifically, these are the main benefits as reported by Sol Solomar International, a DC-based tourism center think tank. Generating additional income and direct marketing for farmers and ranchers, that's the biggest one for us. Educating visitors and public about agricultural and rural heritage, that's an important one for the county. Preserving farms, farmland, and local culture and traditions, that's a good one for the entire county. Enhancing community engagement, local, local pride, and offering culinary experiences and cultural exchange. Our award-winning products and skills will create an environment where Skyline Vineyard Inn will contribute to those stated principles. In short, we are a positive influence for the agritourism efforts in the county, and most importantly, Skyline Vineyard Inn, Skyline Vineyard Inn will be a positive influence for the county. To best serve the county, we, are, we will be joining a fine group of Rappahannock County wineries and breweries approved by Rappahannock County offering lodging. This includes Narmada Winery, 
Chester Gap Cellars, Sharp Rock Vineyards, Rappahannock Cellars, Blue Rock Vineyards, Hopkins Ordinaries, and Chappelle Chardonnay, Charlemagne. We would like to join this group of wineries who are contributing significantly to reduce the property tax burden on Rappahannock County residents. Questions? There's, if there's no questions at this time, Mr. Hendrickson, I, I would like to open the public hearing shortly. Okay, cool. Thank you. I did want to go ahead and state for the record that I did have a family member that did some work at the winery last summer, um, but that does not create a conflict of interest for me or preclude me from sitting in on this application in any way. But I did want to go ahead and make a disclosure to that effect. I, I too, should uh, disclose I have a family member that works there while I receive no financial um, substance. Or, uh, I think I will probably abstain from voting just because of the perception uh, that I do have a family member there. But I am going to listen to everything because it's uh, important to glean this information for anything future related. Thank you, Mr. Sisk. All right. Uh, that, at this point, I'll go ahead and open the uh, public hearing for special exception 24-03-05 Harmony Manor BMB LLC, TM number 28-52F, Bed and Breakfast. Uh, same rules apply. Anyone that would like to speak, please raise your hand, come to the podium, identify yourself, including the district in which you reside. And I think there's quite a few people in attendance tonight, so three to five minutes, please. Yes, sir. My name is Brian Schultz, Hampton District. My wife and I live at 58 Clark Lane. We've been battling with B&B &B at 65 Clark Lane for over 20 years. I could talk for a long time about that, but I'm not. I'm going to say follow the staff report, recommend denial, um, the Hendricksons have had their SUP revoked twice, and he just stated he was a county administrator for another county. I would think he knows the rules, and I doubt that was by accident. So respectfully, I ask you to deny. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Brian Keller, uh, Hampton District. Um, as far as the little Washington winery and Skyline Vineyards, uh, my wife and I have been members of the, their club for since they opened, where basically, you know, the entire time they've run it, we've been members. And what I have witnessed is that they do everything very well what I perceive is that they promote this county as much, if not more, than any of the other businesses in the area. They do a lot to bring in business, which benefits everybody that's, whether it's, you know, patios or, you know, any of them. They, they bring people into this county for, the, for their winery. Um, their employees, from what I have witnessed, tend to stay there for a long, long time, which as someone who did run my own business for 25 years, I think that really shows a lot if you are able to uh, you know, keep the same staff. I think it's a very positive reflection on you and the business you run. And I just think that they are an asset to the community we can use the tax dollars, and um, they just did do the whole hot, the whole road. You know, at least I think they did. They did the whole road. It certainly appears that way, and it is markedly improved to what it was a year ago. And I, I know that um, we have a lot of Airbnb applications that have been approved. And that particular house is a beautiful house with a beautiful view that if it was a, a bed and breakfast, it could do nothing but add to the ambience of the county. And thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes, Karen. Karen Hunt, Jackson District. I've spent a good amount of time researching this property. What I find very troubling is the repeat pattern of violations and requests for expansion that began with the original owners of the property in 2012. Clark Lane is a private road that is neither properly configured nor structurally adequate to comply with the zoning ordinance requirements for the intensity of use that has repeatedly been sought for this property. VDOT stated in 2022, there are multiple uses that share, share Clark Lane access to Route 211 and that the shared entrance with the co-op should either be improved or eliminated. VDOT also referenced that the county should impose conditions to ensure that there are no substantial traffic impacts at the entrance. The staff report indicates that the road does not meet type two requirements in several areas, including crown height, shoulder minimum, side ditches, and receding channels. I think it's great that the applicant has planted peach and apple trees, fiddlehead ferns, and put in a pumpkin patch. I think improvements to a runoff pond are a good thing. And while I applaud the applicant's efforts to improve Clark Lane, those improvements do not fully address the outstanding issues that exist. During a farm tour several years ago, I accompanied someone to a wine tasting at Skyline Vineyard. I recall inadvertently passing the winery entrance up Clark Lane, then encountering a neighbor's sign a short, dist a short distance further up at the slope and curve up to that neighbor's property. It was clear to me they posted the sign stating private property no entrance because visitors to Skyline Vineyard were winding up the hill at their home and they were being negatively affected by that. Clearly, the impact for them is not negligible. The original six bedroom and then five bedroom B&B use originally sought by the Fords back in 2012 was denied based in large part on the private road condition, particularly the entrance situation with 211. Since then, there have been repeated requests for expansion and repeated violations, the sale and transfer of the LLC to the current owners and a continued pattern of violations all of which ultimately led to the revocation of the original expanded special use permit. The issues that led to the revocation in January of 2020, adverse impacts on neighboring properties, not being in accordance with zoning district regulations, impairment to the value of neighboring properties, generation of vehicular traffic that is hazardous or conflicting with existing and anticipated traffic, not being in accordance with the comp plan, not meeting applicable road standards, all still currently exist. None of that has changed. I find the argument that a five bedroom B&B use is somehow less impactful than a fully occupied home with five bedrooms a bit disingenuous. I find the contention that, the contention that lodging tax revenue should be a primary consideration here rather than compliance with our ordinance requirements equally so. This application has so many issues, I just don't realistically see how it can move forward, and I urge the Planning Commission to recommend denial. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this application? I'm John Cappielli from the Hampton District. I believe everybody here at the board knows who I am and knows what my involvement with this application is. I built the road. The road, um, what Ms. Somers has pointed out as type one, type two construction and all the rest of that. It's kind of interesting that Mr. Curry, who is a PE, has never once said that anything was not meeting what the drawing is that we created. Um, it's been inspected upteenth times after big floods. And guess what? There is no mud. There's no running water. We corrected where we had a couple of spots that were down by the back of the co-op. Um, ditches and everything else. Um, Mr. Atkins, for instance, I know is a VDOT man his whole career and built roads. And 
he's been up and down before. We were able, while well, we worked on it for almost a year, to pass tractor trailers on it without anybody getting backed up. It went from 10 feet to 18 feet of actual roadway with another six and eight feet of ditch and grass on the other side. We didn't make the ditches so that you pull off and you get stuck in a ditch. We tapered the road to the sides. We got rid of the six foot high dirt pile that was there, straightened out the road um, and moved it back in. The entrance at the end off of 211 is narrow. It was not touched and it was not touched because of where the embankment, as you come on the road, left hand side of the embankment is almost 20 feet tall. Structurally, what is there would be a massive undertaking and it would be a taking of the folks property there, including their 300 year old oak tree. And they would hang me if I tried to do it. On the other side, the co-op, co-ops more than happy to cooperate, but because they're in a transition, they don't have a main chairperson at the moment that could approve it. So we were left holding our hands open for it. But as far as that is concerned, we have Yoko and her husband here. Yoko Please address your comments every day would come Thank past you. with her with her car and his truck while we were working there, digging out thousands of cubic yards of material to straighten the road out. Only one in 10 times would they have to slow down or stop because we were able to operate completely in the road, building the new road without blocking their traffic. And um, that goes to show what they spent. They spent a lot of money. We put a lot more money into it ourselves because once we got into it, we really got into it and moved a lot more. It's not just about money all the time. So I think for it not to be recognized as being more than it was. I heard this young lady over here say, nothing has been done to it since 20. I can tell you, I spent a year and broke a couple of bones and a couple of machines. It is not like what she said. So what she said was not true. And other people that have said about roads here, rural roads versus paved versus millings versus blacktop. Most of the roads in this county don't meet type one, type two, um, it, it, and VDOT, I've stood right here and listened to the engineer from VDOT say, and it's not going to happen because we can't make 16 foot wide, wide roads because of the expense and or there's just not enough property to build them. And yet the county lives with them and puts up with them and doesn't complain about them as being public roads. They built something above and beyond that. And it was not, Ms. Somer stated, a new road. It's not, or it was not allowed. It had to be a maintenance thing to put it where it was, where it was supposed to be, and to correct the drainage and the brush hanging over it. That's different than a brand new road. So um, what she said is not correct. And I want that to be understood. Um, you've all driven up and down it. You know once you get past the 295 feet mark, um, it becomes one of the widest, clearest, straightest, most level private driveway roads in this county. I dare anybody to come up with something better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, in the corner. Katie Reams, I'm the Assistant General Manager of CFC Farm and Home Center. Um, just wanted to clarify a few things. The applicant did reach out to us, um, and I did tell him that we are not interested in changing the entrance at all at this time. So he did reach out to us. We are not interested in changing the entrance there that runs into Clark Lane. So thank you. Thank you. What was your name again? Katie Reams. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good 
Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Jock Nash, in the Hampton uh, District. My wife, Yoko, and I live at 149 Clark Lane, uh, which is about 500 feet of elevation above Harmony Manor. Um, we moved uh, there about 10 years ago, and uh, Harmony Manor has been a nightmare for its owners, primarily because none of them could follow the rules. The, uh, I'm sorry that uh, Mr. Henderson didn't read the staff report uh, done by Michelle. If he had, he would realize that he's got a lot to do before he has permission to do whatever he wants to do. I'm not going to really go into those kind of things because I'll have ample opportunity. I'm not going anywhere. But the entrance has to be fixed. VDOT says it has to be fixed. They said it had to be fixed two years ago. So it's not like he's a stranger to this new requirement. It's uh, one of the things about uh, Carl since I probably haven't said 200 words to him in all the years he's been up there. When you have an LLC as a neighbor, it's not the same. It's, uh, I'm not sure who is in that LLC, but who do you go to? Who's the guy that makes decisions? Because uh, he's, Carl is not a person that when he's going to do something like this, whether it's a fight, the country inn that he got turned down on or one of the other uh, uh, zoning uh, special permits that he had revoked. If he had, he never came to any neighbor. It's got, the application says, had you talked to your neighbors? No. That's what happens when you have an LLC as a, as a, as a neighbor. And I think this should be tabled until some of the prerequisites found in the staff memorandum are fulfilled. Otherwise, you don't know what you're going to be deciding upon. We will have, Yoko and I will have, and our neighbors will have, ample opportunity to give you the, the, the terrible details of all of this. But, but thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this application? There's no one else that wishes to speak on the Harmony Manor application. I will go ahead and declare the public hearing closed and turn to my fellow commissioners. And uh, Mr. Henry's not here. Uh, it would normally be the habit of this commission to defer to the commissioner from that area. Uh, but since Al's not here tonight, is there anyone who would like to kick this off? I, I'd be glad to. <clears throat> say a few things. Thank you, Gary. Sure. Um, yeah, this is starting to seem a little like deja vu. I, <clears throat> you know, have no uh, argument with the sort of business plan, business model, promotion of the county. Uh, it's all great, except it's really disrupting the area and the neighborhood, and the road doesn't comply with the standard. So. All of that is irrelevant to our conversation tonight. Um, I believe that not only does the entrance have to be fixed, but the, the use is really just not appropriate for that area. It's pushed the Frisbee Golf going into the neighbor's properties is just over the top. And I'm sorry that this ever got to this point, but I absolutely oppose it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Light. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I have driven the road up to Clark Lane quite a few times. Uh, there has been some improvements made to the road. Uh, there's a section in there that has no improvements really been made to, and the section that you have made some Im improvements to, uh, your side ditches, one 
you're running water off behind it, the co-op, and then the other one you're running off straight down in front of the uh, the Jenkins or something, and that will, in the winter time, will sheet across the road, and you will have ice and everything there. The other part is that entrance, that is totally unacceptable. I've been caught in a situation right there that people has to stop right out in the uh, the right hand westbound lane of Route 211 to let somebody come out of Clark Lane. That is totally unacceptable. And I think VDOT has pointed it out very correctly. So I, I definitely would say we deny this request because uh, the road does not totally meet the, uh, <clears throat> the qualifications and the entrance is a total no-go. Thank you. I just would like to say that you know, I really do ap applaud the efforts to increase tourism and, and applaud you know, all the awards and so forth that you've gotten for the business. And I have to say the road is much better than it was. However, uh, the entrance uh, seems to me completely problematic. And it doesn't seem to me that the, well, the, uh, I don't know that much about roads, but in reading the, uh, the staff report and talking to my friend Tommy Atkins, who knows about roads, uh, it appears that this road does not meet the requirements of the ordinance. Mr. Schuller, do you have anything? Carl, I like you. Your wine, not so much. <laughs> I like beer. We do have wine. Anyway, I went there today, and that entrance is awful. Yeah. It is awful. And when I left down to Jenkins' house, they were pulling the well. And those guys were sitting there, and I, was, I recognized them, so I was talking to them, and that's when you came in and invited me up. I appreciate that. When I came back down after finished, the Baymac truck delivering the new pump and the well tube pulled in as I was about to leave. That guy, that he threw it in reverse and started backing out into 211. The plumber's sitting there screaming, no, no, come on. I backed up as fast as I could. I mean, that, that was scary. I mean, I just, until that entrance is, is widened so two cars can pass there at the bottom, I just, I can't support this. I would just say I find myself in a similar situation to my fellow commissioners. I, I would say that the road has been dramatically improved. I was worried after my last trip up Clark Lane that I would need um, substantial dental work to repair um, damage to my teeth from being jarred on that road. And the road conditions are much better. Um, that being said, uh, are they good enough? <clears throat> the staff report would suggest that they're not, and I would agree with my fellow commissioners that, in particular, the fatal flaw for this application is the entrance, um, which has been detailed on many occasions as problematic. Um, it's unfortunate that you all didn't see the staff report. Uh, I believe it was posted in a timely manner and available to the public for review and, um, and I think, thoughtfully concluded as well. Um, I, I know, uh, we go ahead, do you all feel like we should make, go ahead and make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors this evening? And are you prepared to, to move something forward tonight? I'm happy to move that we recommend denial on the uh, condition of the entrance not meeting the standards as detailed in the uh, staff report. Thank you, Mr. Light. So we have a motion. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. Uh, is there any further discussion? All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Thank you very much for including that detail. All right. That takes us to our final special exception public hearing for the evening, uh, SE 24-05-02. Best in Web TM 13 61 Tourist Home. The 
Summers? Yes, ma'am. Are, are you prepared to present that one? Thank you. Uh, this property is located at 619 Zachary Taylor Highway. It is zoned a village of residential. It is identified by tax number 1361. Um, the applicants wish to use this existing home as a three bedroom divorce home. The health department commented that their records indicate that the proposed rental property has a shared septic system with the adjacent property, the old post office, which is currently uninhabited and pending renovation. The records indicate that the septic system can accommodate a three bedroom, six person occupancy. Documentation was submitted from All Star Septic stating that a thorough septic in inspection was conducted in July of 2023 and the system was found to be in satisfactory operating condition. A uh, manhole cover was also installed at the top for safer access. The septic system and drain fill area appeared satisfactory and met all the requirements. Um, the health department did a visual inspection. The water well on the property is a 3C well. Um, documentation was submitted also to the health department for the repair of the well casing, the installation of a new well lid, and disinfection of the well completed in July 2023. Um, they also did a water sample um, and it met the bacteriologic standards for safe drinking water um, established by the EPA and the health department. VDOT commented that the property is being served by an existing entrance to the rear of the property and on street parking off Route 522 Zachary Taylor Highway. And based on their field observations, the existing entrance meets the VDOT private entrance standard and stopping site distance was adequate. Staff would recommend the following conditions be attached uh, to this permit a maximum of three bedrooms, six guests. <coughs> No food service to be offered to the renters of the facility. The permit terminates upon sale or transfer of the property, and the property may not be subleased, rented by third party or used as a township. Thank you, Ms. Summers. Uh, applicants, are you present? Would you like to say anything? Are you sure? Hi, my name is Jennifer. Um, my husband and I own the property. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself and kind of give a little background for anybody who might have questions. Um, so we live in DC, but both my husband and I grew up in rural areas and we have a young child and we'd like to move out here in a few years. Um, but he's in pre-K in DC, which is free there. So <laughs> in a few years when he's finished with that. Um, in the meantime, we were hoping to be able to um, rent the property as a tourist home when we're not here. We plan to spend the summers here when he's out of his pre-K school um, and then the holidays and would like to be able to rent it in the intervening times. We don't want to really want it to be empty all the time when we're not here, but we do try to make it out as much as we can. Um, as I said, we had everything looked at and everything seems to be in good working order. All those restrictions seem very reasonable. Um, we hired a management company um, who's here with us today, Vesta, to help us manage their a local company based in Front Royal. We interviewed a few companies and kind of tried to see which ones had the best reviews and whatnot, and then decided that Vesta would be the best steward of our property. Um, I think questions. We have our skeletons on the front porch, which I know were recently oh, yeah. featured in the news. My husband was interviewed, much to his dismay. I think he would prefer it was me who was. Um, we like to go to the Dark Horse Pub down the road and the Blue Door Inn, and so we thought that'd be nice for any guests we may have as well. Um, and I think that that's all I have. I think there was one recommendation that we lock the um, cover in the back. I did do that today, and I have a picture of it in case you need that. Sounds good. I'm happy to answer any questions as you deem appropriate. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, and with that, I'll go ahead and uh, open this public hearing on special exception 24 05 02 Vest and Web TM 13 61 Tourist Home. If you're here to speak on this application, please uh, raise your hand. Yes, you're free for. Uh, Karen Hunt, Jackson District. 
regarding the proposed VESTA web application. The health department comments point out that the applicant's property has a shared septic system with the adjacent property and a septic system that can accommodate a three bedroom, six person occupancy. Our county ordinance requires that a proposed special exception use quote, will not adversely affect the use or development of neighboring properties, end quote. While the staff report notes that the adjacent property is currently unoccupied and pending renovation, I question what happens when the adjacent property wants to exercise their right to utilize the shared septic system. The proposed three-bedroom tourist home application will max out the required capacity of the shared septic, I understand that we have a fair number of old properties here in the county. This house was built in 1832. I understand that if it were occupied full time as a residential use, the shared septic system may be an issue then as well, but that would be a by right use and not a special exception use. Is the special exception approval appropriate given the circumstances of this property? Our ordinance also requires, among other things, that groundwater quality and quantity are not degraded or depleted to an extent that would hinder or discourage the appropriate development and or use of adjacent or nearby land or buildings or impair the value thereof, end quote. If the Planning Commission were to recommend the approval of this application, it would seem that the adjacent property would certainly be impacted. The only other point I'd make, and maybe it isn't an issue, um, but if you can potentially have six guests, is there sufficient parking availability for multiple cars in the rear of the property? The on-street parking uh, in the village of Flint Hill is a bit of a challenge now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Bill has an opportunity to speak. Yes, sir. My name is Stanley Reynolds, and I live on the Cal Gilmiller lane and it's up the hill from where that house is. I've watched that house over about 15 years, what that's happened to a lot of number of people moved in there and bought it and moved back out. That adjacent building used to be a bank and I think at some point it was a, a post office or something. But there's a, when it was a bank, they built a big, big safe there and that safe is still there. But the back of the house has been torn off and there's basically no structure holding that back of the house up. And we're getting a, a heavy windstorm like we did back in 19, in uh, 2013 when that, then the ratio came through here. That thing's going to end up in, the, in two, 211 and, uh, and 522. And I've been work, watching that and nobody's paying any attention to that. They put some paper over the back of it but that isn't going to stop it from blowing over. And that needs to be considered in this too, because if this thing they want to put in next to it, we've got it full of people and the thing blows over, it's not going to be good. That's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Steve Eastham. I'm here uh, <laughs> representing my mom who lives next door. Uh, I live there also. Um, I just wanted to point out the section about the septic. Uh, as I understand it, the professional building next door, used to be called the Bradford store, uh, is also on the septic, but it doesn't come across in that whatever's written that he was just read. Um, I don't know if that affects, uh, there, there potentially would be four toilets if it was full, which it's not. I think right now there's just one renter um don't know why but anyway um i think for us we heard about this and kind of didn't know what to expect or what it meant what is what is a tourist home what effect can it have how many rentals can happen is it an every weekend there'll be somebody what you know if somebody's noisy who do you talk to do you call the police i mean if there's a fire, if someone's hurt, you know, how, who do you talk to? Do you talk to, um, the, the, what's it called, Vesta? Will they come and take care of things? We looked at their site. 
they had some good reviews and they had some absolutely horrible reviews, like that they didn't answer their phone, the worst experience ever. That's probably typical internet, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't really know the people. I've been keeping kind of my own counsel. I've had so many people come through that house and been friendly to almost every one of them. Uh, I think I just got tired of going through that over and over and over. I hope these are the ones that can stick it and, and raise their kid there, and I think they want to. So I don't want to interfere with something that's good for them, like maybe helping them with the house. They've spent a ton of money already in one year. I've seen them fix their chimneys and uh, redo the entire heating uh, system. They, they had a failed furnace after they bought the place. You know, felt sorry, but was very happy to see them working on it. Uh, was looking forward to having a neighbor, somebody you talk to, help, you know, eat dinner with and all that. Um, anyway, so that, that's one of the concerns is just what, what was written. Didn't, I didn't see anything about the professional building next door. Um, I did wonder. I think the property of Mrs. Webb there um, it owns the right of way next to the Bradford store, as far as I know, which ended up with a concrete road. It used to be just dirt. And uh, what I don't know is if it's anything, in, is it important to the fire hall to be able to get down there, or, or can a car be parked there? Uh, you can go down it and into the property and you would be out of the way. So I don't know if that's important at all, but just for general safety and purpose. So um, that's basically all I have to say. I don't mean, mean any ill will. Um, I want the best for everybody. I'm not a confrontational person, but I just thought those points might want to be brought up. So could, thank could you. I can I ask you for a point of clarification? Yeah. Are, are you at least implying that, to your knowledge, the professional building shares this same? Uh, as far as I understand. It does. It does. OK, thank you. Uh, and it's, it wasn't reflected in what was passed on about how they recently, you know. Uh, as far as I understand, also, the, um, the old post office, I thought I understood after being inspected, they were going to have to drop an entirely new tank before the rest of the septic, but I've heard uh, from the previous owner that that's not the case. They just need to run a pipe from the old post office to join into the septic. I could be wrong. I, you know, it's not really for me to know exactly, but sure. yeah, that's basically the story as far as I know. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Anyone else wishing to speak? You'll have an opportunity to speak. If there's no one else that wishes to speak on this application, I'll go ahead and close this public hearing. Uh, it does look like the property owner would like to add a couple of comments, so at, at this time. I just wanted to answer the questions. Um, so there's 619, which is the property that the tourist home property they rent. There's 621, which is the vacant bank slash post office. We actually also own that property. Um, we just bought it last month. <laughs> so we have only owned it for a few weeks. Um, it does share, it has water rights to 619, so it can tie into our well. And we under, what we understand in purchasing it is that we would just be able to if we wanted to use it, run a pipe into the septic. Um, we obviously haven't done anything with it yet. We've literally just bought it a few weeks ago, but we do plan to renovate it at some point. The back should be closed off now, and everything should be locked up since we purchased it. Um, it the septic is also shared with the commercial building next to it, which has two business rentals that are currently vacant and either one or two apartments, I can't recall, one of the apartments is filled. But our understanding is the septic on our property is able to take all of those that it's appropriate. I'm not a septic expert, but that's my understanding. So if there was something that wasn't reflected in the application, that was an error. But that's my understanding. There is, there is a right-of-way to our 
our driveway that we own so that um, Mr. Lum can ac access his commercial building should you need to mow the lawn or whatever behind it. Um, but you can pull, pull past it and there's parking like behind it. There's parking spots in our yard. So I think those are all the questions, but that's all. Could, could it be possible for us to pull up the Google um, maps and maybe yeah, have you kind of point to sure. what you just yeah. described, including maybe where your property is? Uh, maybe. Uh, let's, <laughs> you have to, uh, if you go, you can't go to the live. If you just do it on live, it, it would, you can get a little closer. Sorry. Put you on the computer spot. Yes, you are. <laughs> Grace under pressure. Oh, and Vesta has a 24 7 thing so they can answer, and I can give Steve my cell phone number too. Yeah, it's 619, if you, Zachary Taylor. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll down a little bit more. Okay, so. Is that the old post office in the bank? Yeah. Is that the property we're talking about? Is that the. And this is the. And that's the professional property. Bedford store. Above it. Yeah. Can you, could you kind of more tell us where your property lines are, if you would? No, please. please. Sorry, Thank we're you. we're we're going we're going wild here. Um, so this is our driveway right here, and then you can you can see where it's brown and it's parking yeah. right yeah. here, and then this is our property, this is our fence line. And is that where the septic is, as far as yeah, you know? Yeah, the septic is like right here, and then the leach the leach will be right there. Yeah. Okay. Give or take. So <laughs> you actually own the septic pit. Yes, the septic is on our property. And, and Bradford's deeded, rents from you, or how does it? It's, it's deeded in that they have right to mm. use it, and then I'll correct you Bradford. Um, it's not Bradford. <laughs> uh, it's, it's in there that they have rights to it and the cost and maintenance is shared, like pro rat. I'd have to go back and look at it. But that's it's all like um, written in the property documents. <laughs> oh, that's the one across the street. Yeah, that's the old post office there. And then the yellow one is ours. And then the store's over there. Yeah, and the store's in Sperryville now, so it's now, uh, that photo is a little bit older. But so if the store has business, the business businesses will use the septic as well, right? Yeah, as far as I know, it's, it's, they're all vacant now. It's a store. It was a dentist's office for a long time. It's actually a dentist we use. She's on a different yeah, road now. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but yes, if they as well. And you can kind of see where the, like the yard behind it so they can access their yard. But where that fence is, you can open that. And then there's parking to the left. Well, so is it, is it your argument that the health department I mean, the health department seemed to have gotten this wrong. Yep. Um, I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's not I, that's that's my understanding. That they, yeah. I mean, if they don't share the septic, great. That makes our life easier. But I'm pretty sure that they. I'm so when they say they the do. septic system can accommodate a three-bedroom, six-person occupancy, they're not. They're not including what used to be Bradford's store, the apartments, and the. So as I understand, the septic can accommodate 
both, but they didn't include, I don't know, they didn't note that in there, but it should be a large enough sentence because when we bought the place, we got it all looked at. They did? Yeah, so that's my understanding, but I'm not. Do you recall what they thought the tank was capable of at that point? I would have to go, but I don't know how, like, yeah, it's supposed to be large enough, but I don't know what size. I'd have to go back and yeah, ask the all yeah, Sorry, that's no, not that's my, okay. how many gallons, that. I don't know. It <laughs> sounds like they commented on the, basically, this building without regard to the rest yeah. of it. Right, and, right. And well, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, it does seem not super um, comforting. But now, um, it seems you do have, I wonder if you have room. I think we had a similar application to this um, at the top of Fletcher's Mill for the Fords a couple of years ago yeah, that, when they yeah. wanted to add on that small mm -hmm. uh, home on their property yeah. as a tourist home. And there were concerns about the number of bedrooms and the septic um, on that property. And I. I <coughs> seem to recall we established some sort of condition like granting the permit contingent on um, some kind of substantiation from a professional that it was adequate for the bedrooms in the home plus the tourist home usage. And well, that, that, and that, that would the, seem to me the way to go. I mean, there's no, because you don't know. I don't None think it's a contingent know. thing. I yeah. think it's well, it, the way it reads now. If those if that building's attached to it, the health department needs to be made aware of it, and they yeah. need to do they an analysis to, based on the whole the whole thing. Well, that's yeah. what I'm that's what I'm saying is I think I'm saying we're saying the same thing a different way. Yeah, is that we don't really want to hold up this application, but it's clearly the septic, or maybe we do, but oh, clearly right. there is I a think, big... I think we do need to hold it up. Okay. I think we need to just clarify. All right. I mean, I, don't I, mean, I, I know they have good either. intentions. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I know y'all have good intentions, but uh, this is a little bit of messy that I think we need to get clarified on paper and everything from the health department that going down the road that we... It doesn't come back to either bite you or bite us. Steve? Um, in fairness, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I try to get everything on the mic. I'm so sorry. And this is a little bit out of order, but um, but I'll allow it with the understanding that we're not going to engage yeah. so, in So I, I'm not sure, but I know that the septic has been looked at. And, and in fairness, I kind of think it has passed with the building attached, but I don't know. I just didn't like that it wasn't in the document, the docs. I, you know, when I looked it up, and I thought, where, where is the building next door? It may be that it's fine. You know, there was one time when the Jennifer Matthews and her husband had a problem right where that drainage would have come out. I don't know if it's related in any way. They had just a swamp down there, and he had to cut some, some paths in, in his house. The greenhouse mm -hmm. was the Matthews, yeah. and, and he had to make some culverts to drain. And it may have had nothing to do with the septic. I really, you know, even he couldn't figure it out. But, um, yeah, in fairness, it's possible that it's already been looked at in the past. I just wanted to be sure that it was uh, notated, in, in the whole thing, you know. Um, again, I, don't want to mess with a neighbor and I, you know it looks like a cute family with a little kid and you know they really love their kid i can see that and all that so i just want to be sure we're on the same oh and uh, we did call jennifer matthews who used to be on the bza she said if it passes through ask that there be like a one-year review and and you could contact the neighbors after a year has everything been working out you know are you all happy with the way things have turned out as a possible thing to consider. So, thank you. Thank you. We could also do it just contingent on approval by the health department, including the including the the Bradford store. So, you know, it, would they approve it, knowing that 
uh, Bradford store is using the septic as well. I'm, I'm happy to handle it either way. I do see this is possibly being complicated because there are empty spaces involved. And so all of those empty spaces are sort of big question marks because um, they will have buy right uses um, that will max out or may have uh, greater water demands than we anticipate at this time or more septic demands than we anticipate at this time. But uh, I, I, I could handle it either way with a contingency or with more information. Um, it's, it's a little unfortunate. I do think otherwise this area has had a little trouble uh, finding uh, continuous yeah, valuable use. So I, I do feel <laughs> like it's uh, uh, worth, <laughs> worth, uh, worth trying to sort out. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of a, a situation um, where the, actually the covenant about the sharing has some restrictions on the conditions of, of sharing. I know that's the case. I actually have someone who shares mine, and I, uh, that's written into the, the covenant. So, you know, there could, I don't know that that's necessarily us, but in the sort of, it's complicated world, I well, do we'll think it's complicated. Game, I mean, I'm glad to hear it doesn't appear that there have been problems particularly, but I, I take your point that the use hasn't really been demonstrated, uh, the other uses. What are your, could I ask, what are your intentions for the, the property that you, the, the other yeah, neighboring property? Yeah. Um, we're not sure yet because we just bought it. We mostly didn't want someone else to own it because it's, as you can see from that, it's a very close slope. to our house. Yeah. Very, very, very close. Have you considered the commercial property? <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll need to have a tourist permit for this one so we can afford for. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we could condition the permit on if we, when we renovate the other, other property, making sure that it's not overusing anything obviously we'd go through all that anyways like it's our septic on our property if we're gonna hook another property up to it we clearly don't want it to not work right that's part of the reason we wanted both properties because it makes it a little bit easier um i don't know if that's helpful and i'm not aware of any issues with the pro the other property the breakfast store next it door is, it is helpful and i think <laughs> it's a good application and i'm glad to see um an interest in these buildings um, because it is sad to see all the empty storefronts in Flint Hill. Yeah. And um, it would be nice, especially to get families living yeah. back in the village, in the village residential areas of those villages. Um, question is, like we, we review things as a snapshot that this is the way it is today. But that doesn't mean that that's always the way it's going to be. And you may renovate that building and then decide to sell it, or something could happen in the Bradford's old Bradford store. Um, so we have to bear in mind that when we make a recommendation, and it is just a recommendation, the board will have final say, that we're taking into consideration the impacts on the other properties in addition to the house. Because you may own one now, but it may not always be the other one now, but it may not always be that way. I have a little trouble even knowing how I would propose a condition. That's what I'm trying to say, how to do the condition. My inclination yeah. would be more to perhaps table and ask for some more information to be brought forward at our next meeting. I don't know. I'm not sure if this one is one of the ones that's subject to are we under other timing issues with this one? No, this is our first meeting on this. We should have ample time. And I, I really think it it is an opportunity for the applicant. Yeah. And we don't want it to seem punitive, but we do want to have all the information that we need to make a decision, an informed decision and recommendation to the board, which I think is maybe the what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah. I like your like hear what Al Henry has to say about it. he's our resident septic expert. I know. <laughs> it's I read this application and Wednesday. thought, I wish I, <laughs> I wish I was going to be here for this one. Well, I think that the big issue is that the, the health department really needs to correct the report. Yep. Because yeah. it's wrong. Um, 
I mean, it's certainly not your fault, but uh, that, I, that would be a, that would be a reason. Why. And that also brings in the question, we, right, we, yeah. here's the, there's right. the title or deed yeah. here, and there's no mention of this. I mean, it says, yeah. uh, it, at the very end, this conveyance is especially subject to the easements, conditions, yeah, restrictions, too, yeah. and blah, 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 blah. But we have well, no idea what those properties, it's got to be a mile long. There's probably 25 different filings in the courthouse. Right. right. I think that should have, I mean, unfortunately, I believe that should have been part of this so we could have had a deeper picture. I can't imagine having a commercial building beside you and they can flush whatever they want in your septic system. I can't believe that. Well, it's probably. But of course, that's what you <laughs> want to take yeah. to part of that property, too. So somebody signed it. And, All right. Well, um, and what about the, the back? Is there more ample room for parking? Because I haven't been a deputy. I, I know that road gets blocked up. And I've, I've actually worked an uh, accident there where a pedestrian. Cars were there and stepped up, that's got hit by a car mirror going through. So, when you put in four or five cars all there and then you're trying to come out of that driveway, that's going to be difficult. They're supposed to be going slower. No, I'm back the other way. You can take it from me, you deserve it. I think there's ample parking there. There is, you can't see it. If you were, it's like behind the Bradford store. So they only have like just a little patch okay. of grass, maybe about this big. And at the end of the driveway, if you make a left, there's maybe like three cars, I would say, could fit back there. It's kind of, it's a pea gravel. Um, so that's where, because I was, that driveway is, we usually pull all the way back or park in front because I don't like parking the driveway personally. So. <laughs> You know, I would love to be able to approve this application because I think it's a great, it's a great thing for Flint Hill that you're there. Um, and getting more people in there is a wonderful idea, but I just don't see how we can do it without knowing what the, if, you know, what if they start, you know, they rent everything next door and you get your septics all overflow. I mean, it would really be a nightmare. Yeah. I've never heard of a problem yet. Even when there was two stores and two rentals, but I just wanted to. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah. My understanding is it's large enough to, like, if if the Bradford store is full, if that's fully occupied with the number of toilets it has in it and our property, yeah. that it's large enough to handle it. But we can, you know, the health department can come back. I. Sorry, I don't know. No, I, the health I, department I said, the, the, I think they just made a mistake. We find ourselves in is that <laughs> anecdotally and historically, they may be accurate, but that's not reflect, uh, reflected in the reports we have in front of us. Right. So, Jeff, did you want to craft a motion since this is well, a Wakefield district? Maybe we or? can continue it to the next meeting so you don't have to. I, I hate for, to do that because it's going to keep. You know, then you have to go before the board of supervisors, but you, they're going to need all this information but it might be, too. They might need it all the time, anyways. Yeah. Which well, means, to, I mean, if worst case, you have to put another septic in. I mean, she would, I think, want to know that beforehand. Or maybe Bradford's would have to put a septic or, or, in. Yeah. Yeah. Or, and, you know, who this, knows? This, okay. yes. Recommend this table and. Request additional information. Yeah, okay. The, well, I move that we table it, or could, is it a continuum? I would go ahead and table it. Until table it until the next meeting um, when we hope to get a full report from the health department about uh, all the uses of the septic system. And the amendment and the, and the full capacity yeah. of, the, of the system? All yeah. All it, could be 50, it could be the 450 or something. Of all the properties that utilize that specific septic system. All right, yeah, so we have a motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, just to be fair to the applicant, do you understand what we're asking for? Yes, you're under. You're asking for the health department to update their report and understand that the septic, like, make it clear the septics. I don't know a thousand gallons. Like, I have no idea how Basically, gallons work in septics. Have a report but that it says the that with all the, the scenarios yeah. that are in place, it's capable fix. of supporting all the buildings. supporting yeah. all the yeah. buildings that are attached to it. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, and no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right. Thank you. That takes us to uh, general public comment for the evening. At this time, anyone that is uh, wanting to speak, please uh, come to the microphone. Let me clear it out. Is it over? No, it's not over. There's a few more agenda items, but that's the end of the public hearing. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Jock. You're welcome to stay. John Tapioli, Hampton. You might want to pull the microphone up, John. John Capielli, Hampton District. Um, I understand that this evening there might be a possibility of discussion <clears throat> in regards to this new ordinance for um, requirements for contractors' yards. As you all know, that I'm very interested in that. Um, I had a short conversation with Ms. Shulin the other day and pointed out one of the requirements that I would like to see. Uh, yes, I'm actually going to ask for another restriction on contractor's yards is that the person who applies for it, the contractor must be a licensed contractor. Um, they, uh, and for their trade that they're asking for the exception for. In other words, I don't want to see an HVAC guy have... 10 dump trucks and 15 snowplow trucks um, because he's not licensed for it. If he's a licensed HVAC guy and he wants to occupy 20,000 square feet or whatever it, it winds up to be, fine. I think the other thing that was missed in your um, previous calculations was about residence as part of the contractor's yard. The scary part would be is if a contractor came up, Hazel, for instance, Hazel came up out of uh, Manassas and bought 50 acres and decided to put a yard here. They don't need to live there. I want to see it preserved for county residents, people that live here and work here and want to work um, with their family and there be some type of, I, I remember a um, gentleman from the BZA saying about having 50 vehicles coming out onto Battle Run Mountain Road, which would be insane. Um, I run up and down Battlefield Mountain Road because I'm working right down the street. And 50 vehicles on Battle Mountain Road would be crazy. But I know that there was an application on Five, five Ponds a large company was going to move in there and it started to live there and the neighbors were against it. Um, but they started operations at four o'clock in the morning and they had over a hundred employees. So you had tractor trailers making deliveries and stuff like that, four or five o'clock in the morning. Um, I'd like to see uh, nothing start before 7 a.m. I know it makes it kind of hard on some of the guys because contractors like to be on the job for 7 a.m. Um, I did for many years. Now I'm smarter and I don't do that. Um, and uh, I think that the, um, the acreage has to be adjusted a little bit um, because a lot of guys don't have 10 acres. You know, they're small independent contractors. Uh, they might have, like myself, I, I, I was working with my son for many years. We're not as of a month ago, um, it might be a father, a son, um, maybe two helpers or something like that. And they're not going to occupy 10 acres. They're not going to be able to afford most of the guys that are small guys that have 10 acres. Um, so there might be some flexibility in there. I have 18 acres and I have another three and a half next door. So I'm, I'm different from that. Um, and I think there should be a certain amount of leeway given to others that are not on gravel roads. 
part of the discussion this evening was about gravel roads and the access of them and whatnot. Um, and some of us, like myself, that are fortunate enough to be on 211, the largest road, heaviest traffic road in the county. Um, there should be a preference towards those roads rather than 522. I call the police department all the time when I'm working on 522 and I have to bring a machine or something and I can't get in the driveway. Uh, and, and the police department has been wonderful. They, they show right up, we meet in Flint Hill, and they'll follow me out and I'll park and they'll do traffic. It's 15 minutes, zip, zip, I'm, I'm gone. Um, so these are some of the, the points that I would like to see taken into consideration when it comes to making this new regulation. I have no problem with it being regulated. Um, I already happen to have a permit for two acres of a contractor's yard. Signed, sealed, delivered, finished, inspected, water runoff, engineers, all done. So that's gonna have to come into when I make my application. Uh, under these new rules. Uh, and I hope that there is some type of, uh, I don't know what you'd say. I think legally they call it a, a governmental <coughs> taking. And she's the lawyer, I'm not. <laughs> so she knows what, what that means. Um, but I do want to support it. I do want to support regulations on it. Some of them might be a little bit crazy. Um, I haven't seen all the proposals and it seems like there's a little <coughs> mist in the air about some of the coming regulations of what might be. Uh, I heard about something about fire systems or, or, or things like that. Um, my place is all milled. There's not a spot of what we got approved that's dusty. I'd like to see that being a requirement, especially when it gets dry. Millings are easy to get. Everybody can get them. Um, and if you're a contractor, especially for the smaller guys, it's not going to be that much material to get. But there's nothing like sitting out on your front porch or your back porch and all of a sudden the guy next door starts up something and the big cloud of dust comes to your house. I don't want to see it. I, I don't want to deal with it. I'll go get the millings if I have to. But those are some of the things I, I'd like to see in these discussions of the regulations. I understood that possibly tonight there might be some discussions about them. Um, it might be a work session over the next couple of months, um, but I have to add my public comment now rather than after. I know it's getting late, so I don't even know if you guys are gonna have time to discuss them this evening. But it's not on the agenda tonight, John. I, 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 it was spoken at the Board of Supervisors meeting that it would be brought up to this evening. That, that's all. And Too short a runway. Okay, whatever. It's, it's on there. Thank, Thank you. you. I just wanted you to know that we weren't discussing it this evening. You're always welcome to have as much public comment as you like. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Come on, Karen. And I worked with John McCarthy on that, and they decided it was an inappropriate place, and they did. Okay. Very good. Well, um, if no one else wishes to speak, uh, that'll commence with the public comment. Uh, we have no old business on the agenda tonight. Uh, the new business, uh, another item that came up at the board meeting is some updates to the rules of procedure. Um, again, a uh, too short a runway to get that completed for the agenda tonight, but uh, we'll get it reviewed. Um, but just what, didn't want to have a surprise when you see it coming up next month. It's just an alignment to get in line with state code and to have something that withstands scrutiny and um, makes it easier for us to do business. Um, and then the other item that I asked Ms. Summers to add to the discussion this evening uh, under new business is the um, ordinance transient lodging discussion. Um, I did bring this up to the Board of Supervisors also at the last board meeting. 
and um, ask for feedback based on the eco retreat discussion at our last regularly scheduled planning commission. Um, I do think it is probably appropriate to look at the conditions uh, on those different kinds of uh, transient or tourist home, uh, B and B hotel transient housing definitions, and um, make sure those properly align. Um, given escalation of conditions of those uses and um, that they really say what we think they should say. And uh, in particular, things like lot size, road type, setbacks. Um, resort. Uh, the resorts is another one. And to make yeah. sure yeah. we really have those um, dialed in so that when yeah. folks make an application, um, their expectations for approval align with what we have uh, in the ordinance. So that's just another thing uh, that will continue to evolve um, and did not want anyone to be caught off guard by that. And I, I hope the other commissioners find that. Do you all think that's worth spending time to refine those definitions? I do, yeah. Uh, I think particularly the fact that we don't have the additional requirements for the larger, more impactful use that, that yeah. it seems like it was you know, not intended. And some of the definitions are um, pretty crowded. I think the definitions probably are have more logic than maybe evident, or maybe we can, that's not to say we can't fix them, but I think they kind of went from small, medium, large, but it's not at all clear to me why there was nothing about the same restrictions on the larger use, I, I guess, because we just imagined that it was, I suspect that it was because we imagined that it was existing structures and that things wouldn't be built for it and didn't really think about where they could show up because we talked, we thought about the things that currently exist. I'm, I'm guessing that might have been why we didn't bring, you know, didn't spend more time on that when we went through those requirements not I that long exactly ago. exactly right. I yeah. think we were all thinking of pre-existing structures. The idea that someone would come in and build something like this just wasn't, yeah. we could we didn't, we didn't imagine the, the geo. Especially out there. The, the, yeah, so, so anyway, I, particularly that part, but I, but I think, I think your recommendation is good. Are you suggesting that this is going to be something on our next regular meeting agenda? Or? I think so. I think if we could all kind of get our thoughts together. Miss yeah. Miss Summers, you pulled some materials together for us on this. Yep. Yep. So um, there's a list of permits that currently exist. The definitions are pulled. So you can start to compare and contrast um, as it exists now. And then there's examples from other counties to um, help shape that going forward. And we'll look at getting a matrix put, finished putting, we'll finish putting it together for what we currently have so you can count on. Oh, you agree? Yeah. So um, just uh, with that uh, coming from Piedmont District, I, I think we really have to be proactive in this and um, and know that maybe these kinds of things weren't economically feasible in the past, but as tourism grows and grows, they, the economics make more sense to people, so we have to be in a position to have it clearly defined, I believe. So, um, all right, well, thank you for indulging me in that. Uh, the list uh, of direction from the supervisors uh, is, is in the uh, agenda. Uh, they're still working through, we're still working through uh, the sign ordinance and um, feedback for you all on the, um, the ordinance review. Anything else for the good of the order? I would like us to consider again, we need to add, I call it, some teeth into this special exception application to help our treasurer and the Commission of Revenue to get cor correct amount of tax dollars that we're supposed to be getting from the Finnish Lodge. Now, what I'm saying is we need to put teeth in to put, put the burden on the applicant, the, the owner, not expect our treasurer to go up against the big B&B &B to try to get information and to, then our treasurer gets a nice, if you want to call it a nice letter sent back. If you want to get that, you'll have to summon us. Yeah. Mm. 
there's no way we're going to be able to sum up these iron meat. That ain't up to us to do that. That owner, that Africa, we need to put that into conditions going forward. It has to be done. I don't know of any other counties that are currently doing that. Michelle, do you know of any? No, ma'am. Yeah. Do you know of something? Don't quote me on this. I saw something somewhere. Let me look into it and I'll get back to you. Yeah, I Thank think you, I Karen. am too. I mean, I think that's an interesting question because it is, it is like a continuously bouncing ball and um, um, enforcement always is is problematic because it's the juice worth the squeeze at the end of the day. Um, maybe, it may be. But I would be curious to see. And, um, Michelle, if there's a way to put out um, a question to VACO, if any other counties are doing this currently, that would be an interesting thing to know. Okay. That would be much appreciated. All right. Uh, next uh, regular meeting is July 17th. Are we on round table discussion? Yeah, are we, oh. we are. Oh, good. Uh, two things. Yes, sir. Um, type 1 and Type 2 roads. Yes. When those properties were currently, uh, that, that Type 2 road was currently serving five properties, and that's, or five lots. And that's no longer acceptable, it has to be a type one road. So at what point did that road become an illegal road or an improper road? Was that the, the fifth division and that person's responsible? It, is everybody on Clark Lane on the hook for bringing that up to a type one road? Because of seven houses, correct, on five lots. That's, I think, what we said earlier. I don't understand why else then type one labor started coming in more. Do you have any background on that, Michelle? I would have to look into it for you. So if, if you were going to enforce that, on, on, on whom? Well, my opinion on that is I don't think that we can really enforce that because VDOT yeah. Has several roads <laughs> in the county yep. that yes. do not meet yeah. type As one or type two, yeah. including so, Riley. But well, we can on private roads well, yeah. on subdivision. Right. So at the time, it was subdivided. That's when it, it was right. time to do it. That it wasn't right. done. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how we keep. Well, the only I can't keep calling it out if we've never addressed it when it happened to begin with. But well, the what, issue I've is never, whether or not you give a special use. Whether you add. Additional. Well, it's a. Oh, it was up there the whole damn time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> serving five lots is supposed to be a type one road. Yeah, yeah I know, but it doesn't. It the way well, it didn't say anything about any uses or anything. It says not, that division. Well, I th the way I read it, it was a it was a call to not aggravate an already non-compliant yeah. road, and the history of why it's non-compliant isn't really germane to the decision today oh, that we're going to make it worse. That That's how I read it. So, so going forward, though, with your contractor yards and everything else, does that mean then every one of them will have to adhere to the type 1, type 2, whatever? Because, we, well, like you said, we pull that card out for a lot of different things. And if, if we're going to start a new, I don't want to say genre, but a, a new escapade, then are we going to apply that same standard if it's a private road? I think generally there's a grandfather provision for uses that pre-exist the change to the zoning regulation. So I don't, I mean, I think that there may be the exceptions case, to that. If that's the case in this, then you need to stop mentioning that. Well, but again, but we're not talking about reasons. going back and making the current road, uh, you know, making the current owners change a road based on past history. And my suspicion is that the, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't approved when Harmony Manor was originally built. So who, that's probably when it went over some line. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't consider it when we think about you know, making conditions worse. We're not contemplating, in the absence of this application, going back and telling the Same. current residents on that road that they have to upgrade it. And I, I think we give wineries and breweries and now distilleries kind of pass on these things. They're allowed to do things on properties that we don't allow them to do anywhere else, but they, we got, we're got we gonna wine, 
we can do this. And to say that this is an additional burden on that road, to have 40 guests there during the day and have 10 of them spend the night, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. That's not overly burdensome to the road. Well, I, I, I would just say a lot of like the a lot of the agritourism, beer and wine language, and uh, a lot of the farms in general. Um, a lot of a lot of those regulations have been usurped by Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, don't have like any it. local control. I don't, yeah. like, I don't like it either. Um, but it is it is what it is. So the question is, um, do we do we aggravate a pre for better lack of a better word a pre existing condition? Um, we yeah because it's all we have that's within our authority to do and well, that is that is the review that we made i question do we really have that the county really have that authority to require a type of road that exceeds what mm -hmm. VDOT is Can't we're not requiring the type of road we're limiting the use on a given type of road that's that's different we're not yes. we're not telling them go update the road. We're telling them, if you want to do an Airbnb, you can only do it in places where the road accommodates. I think, I think it's sort of two sides of the same coin, but I think that's the authority we have, is, the, is to look at the transportation hazards for a new use. That's what I think makes it different when we get these applications that aren't by right. That's probably a can of worms we don't want to open. Mm -hmm. um, the what was the second thing? thing? The other thing I'd like to mention real quick is the, the late, latest talk on rat nets about data centers. Oh, yeah. And sure, I agree with Mr. Curry's take that if it's not specifically mentioned there, then it's not allowed. But when our neighboring counties are addressing these things, it's our duty I to agree. address them. I agree with you, Brian, and I, um, I've brought up to the board a data center several times, and um, I was surprised. They, I saw one. There's one in Wise County. Wise. That one in Culpeper is huge. The one they're building on Route Three is oh, huge. Oh, yeah. job! Huge. So uh, I mean, if that's something that you all want to work on, we can certainly work on it. Well, we can. I bet I could pull together. I think it would be good to start looking at it. Right now we've got contractors' yards, we've got the transient lodging, and I think if we can get through data centers too, that's a good scope of work to see us to the end of the year. And I think we can pull some good language that exists in other counties. Um, but I, I do think it's coming, I, and it reminds me of, um, frankly, the solar farm yeah. discussion we had a couple of years ago as a commission bo and board. And we decided um, to be prudent and go ahead and adopt language because um, these things are happening all around us and we do need to be prepared. I appreciate you bringing it up. Thank you. All right, thank you both. Um, anything else? Uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Light. Second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.